John. First John, chapter 3, verses 16 through 24. First John, chapter 3, 16 through 24. From the New Revised Standard Version of God's Holy Word, hear now the word of the Lord. We know all about this. That he laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God abide in anyone who has the world's goodness and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Look, children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. By this, we will know that we are from the truth and we will reassure our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for well, God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. But love, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God. We receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases. This is his command, that we should believe in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. And all who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. By this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit that he has given us, the Word of God for the people of God. Pray with me. Oh Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of my hearts be acceptable on your side. Lord, I strengthen and with you, my people of God say, Amen. 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 Just love. Just love. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't want to get it. I want to do the right things. I want to be in the right places, having the right friends. I want to be right in my life. I want to be right at home. I want to be right at school. I want to be right in my community endeavors, right in my scholarship. I just want to be right and get it. Sometimes are not enough. 
quickly discover that from time to time, I struggle with every now and then I'm messing up. But the biggest discovery is that many times, eh, since we're being honest, I don't even know the right thing to do. So how in the world can I do the right thing and be righteous when I don't even know what the right thing to do is? Sometimes I just got to confess, Lord, I don't know what to do. And this is especially true in our faith walk. You see, we've been told that the Bible has all the answers to the matters of faith. So all we got to do is read it and get the right answers. We've been told that if we have the right theology, we can get the right answers. We've been told that if we know the history of the church, doctrines of faith, the creeds of the church, we can get it right. We've been told that if we look at preachers on TV, because you know they got to be right there on TV, that somehow we can get it right. So how then do I get this faith walk? It's time to get what you say, Father, right? 
except for love that come twisted the verse. Your story yeah. comes yeah. to just plain toe up on the flow of it. Yeah. Take your answers in the reality show. You already know the formula. Get a whole lot of desperate people to act in desperate ways, get them to say desperate things, get them voted off one by one so they can go back to their desperate lives. Been a while since you had anyone to look at you in that way. Anybody eyeing you and seeing you as desirable and all that talk you did before the so-called love into your life is thrown out the window. Watch yourself. Because you fool yourself in believing that you in love. This warped sense of love had you doing things that you said you never do. Yeah. This time of love had you staying in abusive relationships. Yeah. Unwholesome and unhealthy. Yeah. This time of love would have you in it, but not out of right. <laughs> this time of love would have you spending all the money on her as she spends your money on the real love of her life.
Bible tells me, I said, lay down my life for you. I don't think John meant to lay down our life like Jesus literally laid down his life. Jesus' death was once and for all. We didn't declare it is finished. He meant that all that sacrifice, sacrifice killing, and all that scapegoat is just that tent. That's why Jesus could declare, I laid down my life in order for me to pick it up again. That's why we ought to stop killing folk trying to atone for the sins of people. It's finished. No need to replicate that. Stop trying to kill folk to make yourself feel better. It doesn't work. No need trying to be Messiah. That job is already taken. But John, but what John is saying is that I love to be sacrificial. It should consist of doing things for one another for no other reason but love. Countercultural kind of type of love would have been remarkable back in John's day, but I submit to you that it's remarkable even today. The very fact that somebody loves someone for no other reason just to love is kind of culture. It's not called the mainstream. We are trying to hurry up to look out for number one. Always think of yourself first. Always be mindful of how you can make it, how you can take it. The going thing is just to take care of me and mine and leave everybody else to fend for themselves. In our society, even when we come close to talk about sharing sacrifice, looking out for our sisters and brothers, trying to make sure that everybody has enough, talking about the abundant life for everybody, we are called socialists, communists, lead parts, or even the ill or liberal, rhetorical, people hide behind the language of rugged individualism, self-made person, dog-eat-dog, bias beware. The very fact that we want to talk to our enemies or get an understanding with someone we may have a problem with, that's considered foolish and naive. This whole notion of sacrificial love, the giving of oneself, the living with and sharing with the other, this being in relationship and really knowing and understanding the other, the whole notion of love, just loving each other without worrying about what I'm getting in return yeah. is what we are called to do. Yeah. And you just ever love somebody just for What is this sacrificial love? It's a love that respects the other as human. A love that respects the other as a whole person in her or his own ideas, thoughts, preferences, gifts, and abilities. It's a love that allows the other to empower you as you empower the other to be all that God has created the other to be. It is a love that enjoys the company of the other, respects the boundaries when the other to get away. It's a love that helps others to grow both spiritually and emotionally. This type of love seeks the welfare of the other, that if the other does well, I do well as well. And it is a erotic context. It is in a erotic context. This type of love stimulates both the mind and the yes, soul, both in the same. But the second thing we must do that we just can't talk about love. Can't just write nice sermons and nice books and get nice greeting cards about the love. We just can't talk about love. We must do love. In other words, love is not only sacrificial, but love is also action for you.
then we must help. Yeah. Compel help. Yeah. All of us. Do what I Love then is action oriented. What I have, what have I done to show people that I love should be your question. You should ask daily. How do we know that you love this church? What's your actions been saying? In authentic, in, in authentic relationship, we are always talking and saying the right thing. Even while they abuse you, they still love you. Even while they're talking and lying behind your back, they can still say, I love you. Even while he's running all over the town with every Sue Jane and Mary, they, he still loves you. Even while she's sleeping around with every Tom Dick and Harry, she still loves you. Even while she disrespects you as a man, she still loves you. Even while he talks bad to you, talks bad about you, he still loves you. Every now and then when they lie on you and lie about you, they still love you. Even when they only come around and you can do something for them, they still claim I love you. But you need to tell them the devil is a liar. Is that when we start to attach action to our love, yeah. we know then that we are uh, we are not far from the truth. We don't have to pretend anymore. We don't have to put on a facade and wear a mask of super Christian anymore. Yeah. We don't have to want to do the right thing and be righteous because we now have power from the truth. And even when sometimes our heart may want to condemn us, we when we still don't know what the right thing to do is. We know that God is greater than our hearts. So all we can declare with holy boldness before God and receive whatever we ask, so as long as we obey His commandments and not the Ten Commandments, but just this one, just love. And when we do this, we can rest assured that God abides in us and we abide in God. So if we're concerned about being right and getting it right, all we got to do is just love. When our hearts begin to condemn us, just love. When we get to the place we don't know what to do or what to believe, just love. When you don't know about those folks or those people 